Welcome back, everyone. Um, we are at a point in the program where uh, we want to provide an update on uh, what's been happening in Link. And um, what this really is, is this is an update on what we as a community have been working on together, either through our committees, um, other projects and initiatives. Um, <clears throat> Consider this update as an advanced look into the annual report that we will release shortly after the conference. And uh, that report highlights our work over the past year. I will say that uh, remarkably, uh, the pandemic did not stop or even slow the pace of work. It, it actually accelerated it with our workload here at Regan Street essentially is expanding substantially. Um, I know uh, many of you had the same experience. So I, I wanna begin with some thank yous. First to all of you, our LOINC community, um, your requests for new LOINC terms drives our content and keeps us on trend with uh, current events. You are at the very heart of what we do. So uh, thank you for your contribution and uh, keep that content coming. Next, um, thank you to our volunteers, our committee, subcommittee and task force members and our international translators. You help us with the heavy lifting. We could not do what we do without you, so thank you. I also want to extend a sincere appreciation and thank you to my colleagues and LOINC team for the extraordinary work they do. We are a small team, but accomplish an incredible amount of work for a team of our size and some would describe the team as notorious. Notorious for being uh, responsive and committed and driven to delivering the highest quality of work possible for the LOINC community, the data standards realm, and uh, healthcare overall. So thank you to Swapna Aviankar, John Hook, April Lackey, David Biorto, Rita Baroni, Tim Briscoe, Jamie Deckard, Tracy Edinger, Dylan Giddings, Renee Mitchell, Jennifer Pianchi, and Stephen Wagers, an amazing team. Our supporters are the lifeline of LOI, and thank you to all of our funders, our donors and our members. Your continued and valued support makes the creation and maintenance of LOINC possible. So we appreciate your support and your continued commitment to LOINC. So let's talk about our work in 2020 by looking at some stats, facts, and trends. In um, December, we released um, the LOINC version 2.69 which has 94,895 LOINC codes. As you can see here, the December release is comprised of approximately 61% laboratory codes, 26% clinical, almost 12% surveys, and a little over 1% is, excuse me, attachments. For new LOINC terms in the December release, 57% are in laboratory, 24% are clinical, and 18% are surveys. This slide depicts some fun facts of what is currently in queue as of last night. Um, there are approximately 229 sets of LOINC requests for LOINC terms, and um, 2,766 requests for individual LOINC terms. We have 304 that are pending copyright. And since the December release, we've created 87 new terms. And currently our turnaround time is just over 
four months from start to finish. What is interesting here is that the demand for new long terms continues to grow year over year. And this graph depicts the growth between 2013 and 2020. Note uh, the climb in the slope of the curve between the beginning of 2019 and the end of 2020 in the total sets of new term requests. And this increase has a direct relationship to our response to the COVID-19 pandemic and also reflects our efforts to add SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19 content to LOINC, which over the course of 2020 is approximately 200 codes together. Again, uh, these are exceptional times that require exceptional action from the LOINC team, the LOINC community, collaborators and partners like you. So I know at the October meeting, you learned about our efforts to ensure LOINC was responding to the needs of the pandemic, but I do think it's worth knowing, noting and going over here again. Um, it took outreach, collaboration, planning and partnership with the public and private sector to respond effectively to the pandemic. Um, early in the pandemic, we proactively reached out to public health organizations to ensure there was LOINC content for testing and reporting. We worked with standards development organizations to ensure there was complementary SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19 content across the SDOs. And finally, um, we worked with the um, public and private sector, including IVD entities and reference labs, as well as um, working with um, federal partners to ensure we were including content as the needs evolved. And I'll add that um, our pre-release process was essential to delivering this timely content. Here's another interesting stat. Um, in 2020, there were 44 million LOINC Google search impressions. What's really interesting here is that the spikes in Google searches directly correspond to significant events. And for 2020, those events were related to our work here at Regan Street and LOINC and with others to address the pandemic. And I, I think that's just fascinating. Two things I want to bring to your attention before uh, wrapping up the update is uh, the first is the LOINC user survey. Each year we release the survey, which is designed to assess the needs of the user community so that we stay current and on trend. Um, the results will inform an environmental scan and an implementation guide for work performed under an agreement with ONC. I can't stress enough the importance of the survey. And um, I'll add that we make the aggregate of results available to those who complete the survey. One last thing, um, in December, 2020, we released a public beta of the next generation of the search link tool. It provides a user interface while also allowing searching of some key constituents of LOINC, including terms and parts and groups and answer lists. So be sure to attend the workshop later today and um, also share your feedback. So that concludes the, um, the, the update. I'll, um, my colleagues and I will uh, take a few questions at the moment.